everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and online violin tutor. So Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, hope you're, you are all enjoying your Christmas day wherever you are in the world and whatever time zone that you are in. So this is part two of my Christmas day video. Part one was telling you exactly how to set up your violin directly out of the box that deserved a whole video all by itself. Now that we set the violin up, which includes putting on the bridge, if we needed to put on the bridge, if you don't, then that's fantastic. So we've put on the bridge, we've tuned the violin, we've sorted out the bow, we've tightened the bow, and we put some rosin on the bow, and now we are ready to get on with playing the violin. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do, put the bow down for a second, let's concentrate on the actual violin itself. So the first thing we're going to do is learn how to hold the violin. Now I have got a very in-depth video on how to hold the violin. I'm going to just kind of gloss over it here, but I will link to the video underneath where I'm explaining exactly how to hold the violin. But basically you'll want to put the violin on your shoulder and underneath your chin and the violin will need to be out of the side here. Where you're going to put the violin, if you imagine, you know, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, imagine a clock around you. You want to be positioning your violin at around about somewhere in between the 10 and the 11. So half past 10 if you want to get um, if you want to get into semantics. So nine o'clock would be here. It's it's too far around to the side. Twelve o'clock is too far to the front. Eleven o'clock I feel is is still a little bit too close to twelve o'clock. Ten o'clock is okay. So sort of somewhere between the 10 and the 11 is where you wanna be holding it. So that's what you wanna be doing. If you feel like you've got quite a bit of a gap there, you might be better off just getting a shoulder rest. So this would be an example of a shoulder rest. This is the Wolf, the Wolf Forte Primo. They have a Wolf Forte Secondo. I don't like that one because I don't think it's quite as secure. You've got little rubber feet on there. So I prefer this one. So you can pop it on the violin like that. It doesn't come off, it doesn't move, it's very stable. And then when you put the violin under your chin that way, it's it's nice and stable there. So I do not use a shoulder rest. You don't have to use a shoulder rest. It's complete personal preference. But if you're finding it a bit uncomfortable to hold the violin just like this, then you might find it easier to use one of these. Or you can use something like a cloth. These that. Sometimes you get one of these that sits on top of the violin, so you can, in the case, sorry, so you can sort of put this over and sort of have the violin there and sort of find where it's comfortable for you. So, you know, just experiment with that. So that's where you need to have the violin, but go and check out the, the main video that I've done of this and I'll link everything in order, everything that you need to know, but it's just gonna teach you a little bit more in detail on how to hold the violin. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna move on to is how to hold the bow. And again, I will link to the official video underneath or the much longer video underneath where I'm teaching you to hold the bow. So I'm gonna go through it very, very quickly in this video, just so you get a very rough idea. But you will see on your bow, there should be a piece of exposed wood in between the ferrule and the kind of the plastic binding or the wrapping that you've got there. That piece of wood there is where you wanna be putting your thumb. So your thumb, goes in there and your thumb must be bent. The next thing you're gonna take your two middle fingers and you're gonna put them quite far down. You see how far down, so my fingers are not up here. They're almost sort of even slightly lower than the hair and my thumb is in between those two fingers. My index finger sits on just above the kind of plastic winding or it's actually on my silver winding here and I'm gonna be putting it in this first kind of knuckle there. So not this one, not this kind of first knuckle or joint, but the, the middle one. So I'm gonna be putting that there. So it's on this one here. And then my little finger should just be sitting here. And that's how we hold the bow. So if you check out my other video, I've got that in a lot more detail. This is just a very quick kind of overview, just enough to get you started. I should add in that there are many ways of holding the bow. This is just one way to do it. So it's, you know, there are no right or kind of wrong ways. As long as whatever bow hole you choose to do, you're able to move your fingers in the bow. But this is the way I choose to hold it. 
it's kind of a hybrid between two bow holds but you know it, it works just as well it's it's a nice bow hold and I find it's quite nice and flexible some people do hold their bow a little bit further up I personally find that slightly less flexible for me so this is sort of more close to the Russian bow hold um, just because I prefer it's much easier for me because I, I just prefer to be sort of tilting more towards my index finger and I have a lot less problems with my little finger. So the next stage is just where we need to bow and where we're gonna bow is basically gonna be in the middle of the bridge and that fingerboard. So what we wanna do is put the violin up to the side, put the bow on the string, and just pull the bow up and down. Now in order to keep the bow straight, you wanna be bowing from the elbow only. So you wanna be bowing from this part. So when I'm bowing, only this part is moving. Most beginners tend to bow from the shoulder, so their arm will be swinging back. This part of your arm from your shoulder to your elbow should not move. So you can see here that my arm, sorry I know I'm wearing all black, but my arm is not any further back than my actual back here. So all I'm doing is just lifting up my arm to get the angle of each string. So depending on where I want to be, I'm just lifting that. But when I bow, you will notice that I'm only bowing from the elbow. Nothing else is moving. So from the elbow to the shoulder, it's not moving at all. It's all coming from here. If you do bow that way, that's what happens to the bow. When that happens to the bow, it means when the bow is here, you're gonna be bowing sort of on top of the bridge and then when the bow is up there you're going to be bowing all over the fingerboard and also vice versa as well so in order to keep the bow nice and straight then you're only going to be bowing from the elbow so you know it takes a little bit of getting used to and you're not going to get that straight away but you might want to practice in front of a mirror and just maybe try play some open strings <laughs> So only bowing from the elbow. If you've got everything positioned, so position your bow straight like this. Don't start with your bow like that because then if you start with your bow like that and then you bow from the elbow, then you're, you're gonna be wrong. So make sure that you start where everything is perpendicular and everything is the way it should be. Then when you just bow from the elbow, then your bow should be pretty much straight. So that's where to bow and the next thing is is what you're going to be doing next now if you head onto the links directly underneath this video you can follow my first 10 lessons from my 1 to 30 violin course my 1 to 30 violin course guarantees to take you from a complete beginner someone who knows nothing about nothing to a very decent accomplished intermediate player now the first 10 lessons are available to watch along with all the links and all the downloads and all the resources that you need to get you off and going in the first 10 lessons. Now, if you head over to them, what you will be able to do in part as part of that folder is to download your step-by-step -step kind of lesson plan. This tells you exactly, this, this is all free to print out and everything, it tells you exactly what you're gonna need for each of the lessons. So these lessons that are in actually in blue, they're, they're clickable. They're clickable links obviously you're going to be looking at this on a computer so these will take you directly to the video lessons so everything is literally all it's it's all done for you and it just tells you what materials you're going to need if you need any pdfs it's going to tell you what folder you need to go into so that you can print them out so you can print out your open string exercises uh, you can print out your second finger and first finger exercise sheets and not only that after you've got to lesson 10, it's gonna tell you what you need to do after that and what books and what resources and videos and everything you need after that. So this is your complete entire lesson plan, step by step, all kind of written out for you. So go to that folder, download that, but then once you've done that, you can start getting on with it. So those 10 videos will teach you lesson one will be, you know, learning about the violin. Lesson two will be how to hold the violin, how to hold the bow. A little bit about what I've kind of talked in this video, but more importantly, it will teach you 
what you need to do next. So the next thing that you'll be doing after you've kind of learned how to uh, hold the violin, hold the bow and all that kind of thing, your playing, your next level with the playing will be learning the open string. So you'll want to download and print out this exercise and this will be teaching you the four open strings, where they are and what you need to do. So exercise one, for example, will be like this. And then you'll move on to exercise two, exercise three, so exercise four, etc., etc. And then once you've done that, you'll move on to the next lesson. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail about those in this video because I have them all <laughs> done properly in those videos too, so that you can head to. I just wanted to tell you that that would be the next step. And the point is, is that everything everything is kind of written out for you the entire 1 to 30 violin course lesson plan so you do not need to engage your brain at all i've done all the thinking for you uh, i've given you all the links all the sheets all the resources absolutely everything you need once you kind of go in and download that that step by step which is in the folder so the first 10 lessons which is what this is available for are absolutely free and by the end of the first 10 lessons i guarantee you're going to be playing a song you're going to be playing a piece of music called gypsy firelight that i composed when i did this this course it comes with a backing track at various different speeds i promise you you're going you're absolutely going to love it so by the time you get to my lesson 10 you're actually going to be at a, a pretty, to be fair, you're going to be at a pretty decent level. So I know you're going to absolutely love the lessons. Once you've done lesson 10, which it does tell you in here in step two, you will then be moving on to my book course, which are available to download, purchase and download from my online shop. These are not physical books, they're downloadable books. I've just printed these books out at home and just you know my printer upstairs and just bound them together so these are all downloadable books and then you'll move on once you've done lesson 10 you'll move on to the songbook which contains 10 pieces all at the level i know you will be at after lesson 10 and that's the most important thing this is why my 1 to 30 violin course is all encompassing and it has everything that you need to know on there once you've done uh, songbook one you'll move on to lessons 11 to 20 and this contains lots of exercises lots of techniques uh, lots of scales and arpeggios and all that kind of good stuff once you've done that you'll then move on to songbook two which is 10 more pieces that will be at the same level that you should be on by this stage then you will move on to lessons 21 and 30 these are two technique books so it starts getting a little more more complicated and a little more difficult in these books because this is where your technique really starts to come in and then once you've done those you'll be finishing off the course with the songbook three once you finish songbook three i promise you and i guarantee you you're going to be a really really good very impressive level that you're going to be you're, you're going to shock yourself out this is why this course guarantees to take you from a complete beginner to a very decent accomplished intermediate player and the reason why i can absolutely guarantee that is because my course has just been a culmination of the what 20 years that i've been performing playing and teaching as as an adult with all the students i've i've taught hundreds of students over the 20 years of me teaching i've so i've i've been a i've been a student myself a performer a teacher, um, a London College of Music examiner. I've had a wealth of experience. So all of that has been put into this course. And this is why I know this, this course is gonna get you to where it needs to take you. So all the links will be directly underneath. I hope you have uh, a lovely Christmas and you completely eat your body weight in turkey and mince pies and chocolate and cheese and all that kind of good stuff. Thank you very much for watching. Happy holidays. Have a fantastic new year and I will see you all in my next video next year. Bye.